episode three, Diagonally. Welcome, magic people. I am Mark Zillman, and this is Harry Potter and You, the community kind of D and D slash choose your own adventure kind of thing. I currently recorded this after being ill all week. Um, I'm also recording it on a Friday, um, so it's the kind of day two of the Ukrainian war. I think we can all agree that any loss of innocent life is truly tragic, um, no matter what your political opinion is or what who you think is entitled to what. So hopefully we can cheer everyone up a little bit uh, for five minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, then go back to the real world afterwards. So at the end of the last episode, Professor McGonagall visited our house. Um, we were quite brave in our responses to them, which is quite good. Um, I am prepared for any choice you make, by the way. Uh, they are all mapped out, so don't be afraid of what choice to make. You will not offend me. Some of them will be quite hilarious. Also, thank you to everyone who's given me like positive comments on this. Um, some people said I oh, was quite dubious about this until you started it. I was like, oh, yeah, I was also quite dubious about this until I started it as well. <laughs> so thank you for all your support as well, especially when I've been ill. I finally get to results on a uh, true uh, TV style. Lots of pauses before giving results. No, not going to do that. So the first question is, do you leave so you will arrive on time or leave early? 86% uh, have voted for arrive early which is good, otherwise, well, you find out. The second question, do you have lunch in London before meeting Professor McGonagall? 82% uh, said eat lunch, 5% said skip. And finally, the third question, <coughs> it's kind of a, I don't know, a bit of a filler, this one, but uh, do you take your parents or go on your own? Uh, and 61% said take parents, which is a bit more close than I thought it was going to be. Actually, I thought a lot of people were going to say go on your own, but uh, I think probably you, you want to see what happens with the muggles. <laughs> Or maybe it's the fact that you find the dad quite hilarious. Just to let you know, I'm recording this on the Friday. We'll be launching on the Monday. I didn't want to launch any content uh, during a very sensitive time at the moment. You can kind of understand why Fantastic Beasts didn't do their trailer. Um, it's a bit sad, really. <coughs> I was really looking forward to it. But, you know, given the circumstances, I think I can wait. So here we go. The following week, you head into London by train with your parents in tow. Luckily, you decided to leave early as there were delays with the trains. And the one you would have taken was cancelled. So you dodged a bullet there. Actually, if any of you live in the UK, you would know what that feels like because it always happens on the weekend. You all decided that it would be best to have lunch in London before meeting Professor McGonagall. After all, who knows how long it will take to find all the strange things on the list. It's not like you see cauldron shops every day or we'll come to think of it at all. You change to the underground at King's Cross Station and head into the city. By the way, this is kind of how I get into the city. <laughs> you arrive at Covent Garden for lunch, which is not far from Charing Cross, where you are set to meet the Professor. <clears throat> By the way, I did a lot of research into this. After you have your fill, you head out. Professor McGonagall said to your parents to meet them between a certain bookshop and a certain record shop. When you get there, you see a grubby looking pub called the Leaky Cauldron. The odd thing is that your parents didn't notice it at all. Not until you pointed it out. The door suddenly opens and Professor McGonagall is there to greet you. Although a little stern looking, she gives you a nice smile, if not a little brief. You are led through the bar and out the back of the pub where there's a brick wall and some dustbins. Professor McGonagall then taps a brick three times with her wand. The brick then wiggles and a small hole appears. The brick starts sliding back to reveal a street you have never seen before despite being in London a number of times. Professor McGonagall then turns around and says, this is Diagon Alley. You will be able to find everything on your list here. You take a closer look and you see that everyone is wearing robes of some kind. The nearest shop has a stack of cauldrons outside the front. This is no ordinary street. Professor McGonagall gives you another brief smile and says, Our first stop will be Gringotts Bank. We need to change your muggle money into our money. Um, what is muggle money, you ask? Professor McGonagall says, A muggle is a common term for... Oh, sorry, I'm editing as I'm going along. <laughs> Professor McGonagall says, A muggle is a common term for people without magic, my dear. We have our own currency in the wizarding world. Gold galleons, silver sickles, and bronze knuts. Don't laugh, dear. 17 silver sickles to a galleon, and 29 knuts to a sickle. As you walk through the street, your senses are bombarded with the sounds of witches and wizards buying up various items. Your sense of smell is overwhelmed by fantastic looking street food. You start to regret eating before coming out. Many parents with children are getting ready for the new term. You wonder if any of them will be your classmates. Gringotts is at the end of the street, and it towers above the other shops. As you approach, you start to look down from the sign at the top, 
and see the bronze doors behind a set of columns. You freeze as you walk towards them and spot some sort of creature with a pointed beard who is a head shorter than you. They are wearing a scarlet and gold uniform. Your parents bump into you as they were still looking at the architecture. Professor McGonagall turns around after hearing the commotion and says, Gringotts is run by goblins. They are extremely greedy and protect their money and valuables at any cost. Ideal for banking. Your dad laughs, saying, just like bankers in our world. The professor simply says, indeed, as the goblin bows when you pass. You pass through a second set of doors with the words engraved upon them. Enter stranger, but take heed of what awaits the sin of greed. For those who take but do not earn must pay the most dearly in their turn. So if you seek beneath our floors a treasure that was never yours. Thief, you have been warned, beware of finding more than treasure there. Your parents look at each other and your mum says, sounds like they take the security seriously. Another pair of goblins bow you through the door and into a vast marble hallway with over a hundred goblins at long desks running the entire length of the room on either side. They were busy scribbling in large ledges, weighing coins on brass scales <coughs> and examining precious stones through eyeglasses. Professor McGonagall approaches the nearest free goblin and they converse with each other. You are taking in the room while your parents exchange your muggle money for the wizarding kind. There are too many doors to count with goblins escorting people in and out. One of these people just walking out of the hall is so huge they cannot be real. He must be at least eight foot tall and is accompanied by a boy about your age. After a few minutes you have your wizarding money and as you exit back onto the street, Professor McGonagall asks whether you'd like something to eat at Rosalie's tea bag or Floraline Fortescue's ice cream parlour. But as you've already eaten, you give it a pass. She then asks you to pull out the shopping list from the letter she gave you. It reads, three sets of plain work robes, black, one plain pointed hat, black for day wear, one pair of protective gloves, dragon hide or similar, one winter cloak, black silver fastenings. Please note all people's clothes should carry name tags. Set books. All students should have a copy of each of the following. The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1 by Miranda Godshawk. A History of Magic by Bethilda Bagshot. Magical Theory by Adelbert Waffling. The Beginner's Guide... Oh, by the way. <coughs> Waffling is a usually British term for blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Waffling on. A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Emmerich Switch. This is quite clever. Switch, Transfiguration. A 1,000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by Phyla Spore. Fungus Spores, very clever. Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenus Chica. Fantastic Beasts of Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. <laughs> like trembling. Other Equipment, One Wand, One Cauldron, Peter Standard Size 2. One Set of Glass or Crystal Files, One Telescope, and One Set of Brass Scales. Students feel so bring an owl or a cat or a toad. Parents are reminded that first years are not allowed to own their own broomsticks. Professor McGonagall. Professor McGonagall says that we have eight shops to visit. We have Ollivanders for your wand and Flourish and Blots for your books. As we have a good amount of money, I would suggest scribulous writing instruments for your quill, as the school quills are rather careworn. There is Portish's Cauldron Shop, Wizardry's Wizarding Equipment for Scales and Brass Telescopes. For a uniform, I recommend that Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions. We then have Slug and Jitters Apogathy and scribulous writing instruments. Your parents have agreed that you may have a pet to keep you company. You may choose in which order you would like to visit them. So basically for the eight shops you have eight questions and you get to vote for which one you want for each of the eight slots. Eight questions. Now highly likely there will be numerous winners in each one. So if say for example you have Ollivanders in question one and Ollivanders wins question two as well the next one down will be selected. Okay. So questions one to eight. Your choices are Portish's Cauldron Shop, Slug and Jicker's Apocryphy, Madame Malcolm's Robes for all occasions, Scribulous Writing Instruments, Ollivanders, Islet's Owl Emporium, or the Magical Menagerie, depending on which pet you choose for question nine. Uh, seven is Flourish and Blots, and eight is Wizardry's Wizarding Equipment. Now, there are various other characters shopping in Diagon Alley. You may have seen one of them already. They are also shopping at various shops. You may bump into them if you pick the right choice at the right time. I have written all them all down as well, so I can't cheat. So question nine is which pet would you like? A cat, owl, toad, or no pet whatsoever. Then the rest of my documentation is all the secret stuff where Harry goes. 
So the survey is open now. And it will run until Monday morning at 8am, <coughs> which is the time where I get up, look at the results and frantically start writing things for a video on Tuesday. <laughs> Unless any major Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy news happens, which I highly, highly unlikely given the current situation. I also have a bunch of stuff planned. Uh, I've taken a lot of footage of um, Magic Awakened. I've also noted down where I've got stuck because it's quite a learning curve, that game. So I've got a number of sort of penciled ideas for videos to help guide you through the initial game's release. Um, those I'm going to video in advance and then kind of queue them up because kind of launching those at the right time is kind of important. <laughs> that game is due to beta to finish on the 28th and then there'll be some development time after that before they release the game. It seems pretty robust. A couple of people have had issues. I know Matt Animagus had a few issues, but he was using an emulator, not a phone. And I do know there are some issues with emulators. So anyway, cast your votes. And uh, I am going to go to Mallorca <laughs> over the weekend. Have a nice long weekend. Um, but I should be able to jump onto Discord every now and again and reply to your comments and stuff like that. Okay. So wherever you are, stay safe. Have a good weekend. And don't forget, it's a heavy time. But don't forget to do something that makes you smile. Okay.